Welcome back to another video from Between CAD Classes. This is going to be the first of a series of tutorials on 3D modeling in Autodesk Inventor. If you would like the detailed drawing of this particular part so that you can work through it yourself, you will find a link in the description of this video to a PDF copy of the detailed drawing. If you like this video, please subscribe as I will be continuing to add more of these videos. When looking at any 3D part, there are so many different ways that it can be modeled. I'm going to walk you through one workflow to model this part. It is by no means the perfect way to do it. It is my preferred way, but others might have other ways that they prefer going about this particular part. But I'll do my best to explain my thought process as I create each of these features. We're going to start by creating the rectangular base, which is 96 millimeters by 64 millimeters, and it is 16 millimeters thick. As you can see in this preview, I'm just going to create the base. I'm not going to create the cut feature. I'm going to do that in a separate feature. So here in Inventor, I'll go ahead and create a new part based upon the metric standard millimeter part template. Then I will start my 2D sketch. Since I'm going to be looking down at this shape, I'm going to select the XZ plane, my top plane. Now I'm looking straight down from the top. As you can see, it is rotated 90 degrees, so I'm going to select the rotate button here to orient my screen properly. Next, I'm going to draw the 96 by 64 rectangle. I am going to opt to choose the two point center rectangle. This will allow me to center the base shape around the origin planes. So I'll go ahead and go with 96, tab over, then 64 and enter. Once again, this is just one workflow. Somebody else might opt to start one of the corners at the origin. I always prefer to center my shapes around the origin planes. That way I have datum planes that I can use if I want to, for example, mirror features. I'll go ahead and finish my sketch here. Then I will start my extrude command. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this, the depth of 16 from the detail drawing, and click OK and I now have my first feature. Next, I'm going to create the cut feature here. So I'll begin by sketching on the top of this part. Once again, I'm going to rotate my screen to orient it. I'm going to use my project geometry tool and either select the entire top face or the right side edge. That will project that line onto the sketch plane. And now I will use my line command and I'll draw on a line. I could go ahead and put in the length as I go, but I'm just going to arbitrarily draw it and come back with dimensions afterwards. So I'll create a horizontal line here. Then I'm going to create a tangent arc. There is a tangent arc command underneath the arc tool, but while I'm in the line command, if I hover over the endpoint I just drew, it'll turn gray, and I can click and drag in the direction that I wish to be tangent to. So if I come back to the original, I can come off tangent multiple directions here. So I'll just bring it around until I have half a circle and then draw back to the opposite side. Then I'll add in some dimensions. So the detail drawing shows that this is a radius of eight. And it shows that it is basically centered. It is 32 millimeters from the bottom edge here in this view. And then finally, the depth is 20 millimeters. I can see the sketch change color because it's fully constrained now. I'll go ahead and finish. Then once more, I will extrude. It already picked my profile, otherwise I can go ahead and pick it. I'm going to change it to cut material. Uh, it's currently set to a depth of 16, which would work, but the problem with doing it this way is if I go back and change the original extrusion depth to 20, this cut will not go all the way through. It'll only go 16 millimeters through. So I'm going to change my distance to through all. That way, regardless of the thickness of the plate, it will always cut completely through it. Next, we're going to add the back extrusion. It does have a curve on it, but rather than sketch that curve in the original shape, I'm going to add that with a fillet. So I'll begin once more by sketching on the top surface here. And then I can project some geometry. I'll go ahead and project the entire top face here. Then I can come in with the two-point rectangle, pick one corner such as the top 
left corner here, and then I'll come down and click somewhere coincident on the bottom line here. Make sure not to accidentally snap to the midpoint, for example. Then I should be able to come in with one dimension between the left edge and that vertical line. And according to our detail drawing, this is 16 millimeters wide. Now I can see my sketch is fully constrained, so I will finish, then extrude. Now since I projected the entire top face, I have two surfaces I could select. So I'll select the appropriate one. And again, referring to my original drawing here, from here this is going to be a depth of 48. Then this is going to have a 48 radius fillet. So I'll select my fillet command, select the edge here that I want to fill it, then adjust the value to 48 then click OK. Next I'm going to create the box shaped extrusion here. And similar to what I did with the bottom base, I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm going to make the rectangular prism and then I'll create the half circle cutout. If you're wondering why don't I just go ahead and sketch those both into the same feature, I feel like I have a lot more flexibility when I do each feature individually. For example, if I decide that I no longer want this cutout, I can simply come in and either delete or suppress that particular feature and it's gone. I would not have that option if I just originally sketched that in the first extrusion. Of course I can right click and unsuppress it to bring it back. So once again I will sketch on this top surface here, project geometry of that top surface, and then create a rectangular shape that starts in this upper left corner. I can go ahead and adjust my values while I go if I want. So this is going to be 40 wide, and then I'll tab over, and then it is going to have a depth of 42 here. And then once more I can finish and extrude, select the shape, and the height for this particular one is going to be 28. Now I can go ahead and create my cutout. So I'll sketch on this front surface here. I'll project geometry. I could choose just the top edge or the entire front surface here. I'll choose the top edge here. Then I can come in with a circle and I should be able to snap to the midpoint of this projected line. There's the midpoint. Then I can go ahead and put in my diameter value. Looking at the original detail drawing, it has a radius of 12. I'm drawing a circle, so I'm actually in the diameter. So I'll put in 24 for my diameter. I could go ahead and trim this or I can leave it as is. Um, let's say I go ahead and trim it. I'll choose my trim command and then I'll select the top half of the circle to trim out that portion. Then I can go ahead and finish and extrude, switch to cut. And then once more, instead of doing a depth, I'm going to have it cut all the way through using the through all option. I'll go ahead and click OK. And once again, I did that as a separate feature because that makes it easy for me to suppress or delete the cut at a later point if for some reason I don't need it. I'll go ahead and undo to bring that back. The last feature then will be this triangular feature. I'm going to use my mouse to orbit around to the back side of the part here. And then I'll sketch on this back surface. I'll use my project geometry tool to select the back face here. Then I can use my line command to draw in a line that connects the two endpoints. Then I can finish sketch. I'll go ahead and select my home button here, then extrude and select the shape. As you can see, it's going the wrong direction, so I'll choose the flip option here. Then I will adjust the depth as needed to 12 millimeters, then click OK. And that completes this part. As you can see, when I do select the home button, it orients the, the part properly, and that's all because when I created that first sketch, I made sure to orient that sketch properly. Once again, if you want to try this out, take a look at the description for this video where you will find a link to a PDF copy of the detailed drawing. If you found this useful, please give it a like, maybe a comment, and let me know what you liked or didn't like. In fact, if you want to comment a specific part that you would like to see made, feel free to do that as well. We'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.